2003. PPDC is a citizen sector organization created to increase citizens' participation in governance in a way that improves the integrity of public and private sector processes. Our major activities are in the areas of anti-corruption, good governance, digitization, promotion of increased citizens' participation in a way that improves transparency and accountability. With a staff strength of 22, PPDC has successfully initiated and implemented many projects in key sectors such as health, education, extractives and security. A key learning experience for PPDC was the level of incoherence in public finance data which in turn breeds corruption and inefficient governance systems. These inconsistencies created a system of inefficient tracking, verifying and reporting on contract implementation. With this knowledge, in 2017, PPDC successfully advocated for the inclusion of Open Contracting Data Standards OCDS, within Nigeria's Open Government Partnership Commitments. We have also built the first OCDS compliant platform called Budeshi, www.budeshi.ng. Budeshi assigns a unique identifier for contracts and ensures that contracts can be tracked from project conception stage through to project delivery. One of the ways in which we encourage and stimulate citizens' participation is through our Budeshi radio programs, where we share our experiences and emphasize the need for all hands to be on deck to institutionalize open contracting practices across all stakeholder groups in Nigeria. PPDC has also launched a toll-free line 0800 Budeshi or 0800 2833 to enable citizens to report on the state of public projects within their locality and states at no cost to them. This is with the aim of encouraging citizens' inclusion and also to serve as an avenue to keep government institutions aware of abandoned projects that they may not be aware of. Nigeria became an official member of the OGP in July 2016. In recognition of this, PPDC was appointed as a member of the OGP National Steering Committee by the Federal Ministry of Justice, who is the coordinating ministry of the OGP in Nigeria. PPDC often interfaces with policymakers in the government, writes articles on OGP, and practices in Twitter campaigns to gather interests and awareness on the OGP. For seven years, we have used the freedom of information requests made to public institutions to rank levels of compliance across public institutions. We have ranked over 198 public and security sector institutions. This rank has come up on the 28th of September, which is the International Right to Know Day. The Nigerian Integrity Film Awards, Home Vida, another initiative of PPDC, is a unique platform that provides incentives for young scriptwriters and filmmakers to promote integrity values using film while influencing the wider public. Home Vida also aims to influence the type of films being produced in the film sector, in this case, Nollywood, by providing incentives to filmmakers to produce films that address social challenges and societal values as a contribution to nation building. The Digital Inclusion and Safer Internet is also another initiative of PPDC. DC was created as a fallout of Home Video's work towards promoting a safer internet. The DC program seeks to promote universal access to ICTs for sustained individual and economic development and for full participation in society in a way that preserves the safety and freedom of the internet. We have successfully worked with some international donor organizations such as the World Bank, the Open Society Initiative for West Africa, OSIWA, MacArthur Foundation, African Freedom of Information Center, Luminate Group, Open Contracting Partnership, amongst others. At PPDC, we educate, we empower, and we mobilize for integrity in governance. government.
citizens participation in governance is paramount and a civic responsibility this is because it allows them to critique the performances of government and give feedbacks on how these performances affect their lives in the nigerian geopolitical context the diverse social cultural groups makes the nigerian demography very unique groups such as youth and women groups age grades traditional and religious bodies are significant in their unique ways of influencing government policies to suit their agenda sector organization that promotes increased citizen participation in governance the public and private development center ppdc recognizes the critical role citizens play in governance especially in public finance management of which processes lead to service delivery of value and interest to them through education sensitization and publication of contractor data on the Budeshi platform, citizens were able to positively interrogate and monitor contract execution within their communities, thus leading to improved service delivery. To ensure rural communities understand and utilize their civic rights and strength, to ensure governance work for them, PPDC embarked on a community engagement interface with six communities in Enugu and Niger State. These engagements were in bid to educate the rural communities, use evidences contained in the monitoring reports within their localities to measure the impact of the project within the communities and to showcase what they can avert if they were actively involved in the execution process. Social accountability is as important as the entire process of initiating and executing projects for people's well-being. But most projects in Nigerian communities are initiated and executed by people who do not live in the communities with little or no input from members in the communities. In reality, they don't come to find out what exactly are the problems of the community. They don't. But sometimes, if they want to execute a project, just like the one we've mentioned, they don't give pre information. We just want to see maybe some uh, vehicles coming with working uh, materials. When we now ask what exactly is the problem, they will not say this is what they want to do. So they don't give us any pre-information concerning what they want to do. To seek the concept or advice from the community members, they don't do so. Neither do they ask the community leader. This is what we want to do. Please, we need your advice in this regard. That is not there. It is part of the problem we are having with them anyway. But because this is what we want. When they start it, we don't protest, we don't stop them. Because this is what we've been asking for. But the truth is that they don't do it. And then some people will say, let's go and stop these people. We should know about this before they start doing it. And my leadership style is this. If this is what I want, and that thing is coming, no need to protest. I'll tell them, no, we asked for this, and it is coming. communities of Niger states, the projects of interest were the primary health care centers in the communities. For Lanley, 13.2 million Naira was the contract amount, while 12.8 million was for Yelwa Primary Health Care Center.
fact, I'm in charge of this hospital. I was here almost getting to 10 years in this community. We shifted from one place to another, almost this three point now. So now, even the place we moved to now, we're not enjoying it because there's no hospital facilities. Things that we use when the patient come. When beds to admit the patient, because we have a lot of, according to what this man said now, we have a case of diarrhea and this due to poor water supply. So we need your solicit to that issue. The facility, the hospital needed, I think they even listed it. We even listed it. So we want them to help us with those facilities, like drugs, like equipment to be used. Even the water, the, the, the main problem in the hospital, we don't have water. Before we get water to the hospital, unless we pay the people that fed the water for us, and that the water is not even safe. So we need your solicit to that issue. Ya <laughs> seems to also be the problem in Umuabi and Lanley communities. This is despite the drilling of some boreholes in the community. Well, and another challenge is uh, most of those boreholes that we are done are not functional. They are not functional. Almost all of them. And I don't think there's any government project for a borehole that is working as that now. we have done several things. We've approached our brothers and our sisters, whom we know are closer to the government, requesting for all these things. Fiber water, road projects, and other infrastructure. We need a company here. We need to be engaged doing something. We don't want to be idle. Because an idle mind, they say, is devil's workshop. And we don't want to be one. So what we are saying is that we've approached them. We have uh, an SSA to governor in this community. We have SSA to the deputy senate president from this community. And we've met all these people We've told them, we need this, we need that, we need that. Let them help us tell the government. Some of us, we are not close to them. There is no how to let them know all these things without through the people we know are closer to them. Uh, we've done that. Nothing else. We won't fight, we won't protest. We keep on doing it. We are calling for meetings, inviting them for meetings, town hall meetings, addressing our needs and um, things that we need. The involvement of people in governance process will go a long way to ensure more efficiency in service delivery. Community members, media practitioners, and government officials made several recommendations. So, Zanga to Gabe Gagoa, Giga Gaki Lounge, Gija, Ola, Kiko, Lati, Jenkaza, Oje Diamond, Wagaga, and Ajino, Giano, and Ajino, Wagino. Where you are, Gijino. Ile yemanchiji 
a ce din yan do ci ne community development na a ce har aje to nu sa community development project mu ci gwamnati gwamnati ce la wala la ci ci oto a ci ce lo to yan community mu ci wale dan do ga dugba ku a ce yi mu ci ga kin ga ya ka yi ja kai ce ja kin ga ya lan le ci When it comes to the project execution in the town, strangers are the ones doing the work of the youth. We believe that we can do it. And that is why we are crying out that we should be involved. As such, to foster efficiency in public sector governance, increased citizens' participation is non-negotiable. So the essence of us being here together is to educate you that you have a right. That is the essence of being here. And you must demand for your right. You don't demand for your right with violence. It's wrong. You demand for your right in a peaceful way. And when they know that you know your right, nobody will take you for granted. And if you're talking about who should participate, it is all of you, it is all of us. We need to know who and who are doing what. What are they supposed to do for us? Because I won't be the one to use it. It's you people that will use it. So you need to make sure that it meets what we want. So, Biko and Obuna, Otoye Neba Ogwa, Obuna is a problem. Feel free to visit our office at a new market. When you come, we we'll look at you and see what. To, if the state has no, pro, uh, cannot intervene immediately, we see what we can do to make sure our children are not suffering. It is evident that collective efforts amount to achieving desired outcomes, and this equally applies to governance. Whilst government budgets and implement projects for the people, citizens in turn can ensure what are being provided are closely monitored and that feedbacks on impacts get to the appropriate authorities. The future we foresee and long for lies in the ability of mutual collaboration and active involvement of all stakeholders through provision of information and support, participation and feedbacks. So that's why you need to be part of it. So what you need to be part of it is to have access to that information on that school or that uh, primary health care center that is being constructed. I will make sure that also this information are given to the headmistresses, headmasters, village heads, and also put it in local newspaper or wherever that all other people can have access to it. So we want this conversation, this feedback from you people. We want you people to, to tell us what kind of information we need to be able to influence the quality of uh, service delivery that being delivered to you. APDC strives to provide this support system for both government, citizens, and the private sector by bridging existing gaps for inclusivity, increased collaboration, efficiency, and dignity for all. Here I don't know how about the collection. Number of the over, all out with the toll free number. Oh, in an Ajuka, a little kid is in the time. Number of the over, all our toll free number. You need real airtime. You got a little credit, you pay a baga. You pay a mother zagi. You go, you tell me, you tell me, Mamma, I put your thing in the award now, community in 2018. I only go there, I got party in India. You check on my projects now, go on my community, which are in the area. In Kaba and Ibani, in my name is you. I have a community based mentors. No more for that. I use it for her down over down. Yes, a fire picture. Has a child picture. Has a Tawania. I have the family member implement the project. Joker has to do. 
to take any information now. Call us on our Pradeshi toll free 0800-283-3744 to report on poor implementation of public projects within your community. Tweet at our Twitter handle at PP Monitor NG and on Facebook Procurement Monitor and on Instagram at procurement underscore monitor underscore Budeshi to engage and learn about our work. Visit our website at www.procurementmonitor.org and read more about our programs. Log on to our open contracting portal at www.budeshi.ng to source for contractor data to track projects within your community. At PPDC, we educate, we mobilize, and we empower for integrity in public sector governance. Together, we will make governance work for the citizens. The ancient city of Abuja, now Suleja, was a Hausa principality founded by the former ruling dynasty of Zazao Kingdom with its capital at Zaria. By 1804, when Sheikh Usman Danfudio launched his Islamic reformist jihad in the Hausa land, the jihad did not extend to Zazao Kingdom because the then king of Zazao, Ishia Kujatao, accepted the Sheikh's call to reform Islam. As a result, this protected and prevented his kingdom from the jihadist conquest. However, by 1806, when Ishia Kujatao died and his son, Muhammad Macau, succeeded him, he repudiated the oath of allegiance his father, late Ishia Kujatao, gave to the jihadist. As a result, his kingdom became exposed and susceptible to attack from the jihadist. It became only a matter of time before the Fulani jihadists came calling. Therefore, by 1808, the jihadists invaded Zaria, the capital of Zazao Kingdom, in a suppressed attack while the people were observing Eid al-Kabir prayer outside the town and it was forbidden for them to carry arms. Caught on a west, Macau and his men fled and wandered for 20 years, moving southwards, until they reached the present-day Suleja because it was thought that the jihad had already taken over the northern parts, believing therefore that moving southwards was a more safer option. While they were fleeing, the jihadists were pursuing until they arrived Zuba, presently in the federal capital territory in 1825. On arrival at Zuba, the chief of Zuba, Mohamed Guabo, welcomed and sheltered them. Macau and his men encamped outside the gate of Zuba from where he fought some of his vassal states, which included Jiwa. On his departure from Zuba, he proceeded to Panda, Toto, Gulu, and then to Lapai, where he fought the new rulers of the Lapai Emirate. It was in that encounter that Macau was killed on account of treachery and betrayal by his men who deserted him because they thought that he would not support their quest for accusation and sale of captives as slaves after their conquest. Before he died in the, in the battle with La, the Lapai forces, it is said that Macau called the attention of his two brothers that were with him. One, Abu Bakr. Baki, because he was, he was dark, he was dark-skinned, 
person, Abu Bakr Baki. And his younger one, Abu Bakr Fari, because he was light in complexion. So it is said that Macau advised uh, the eldest of his brothers, that is Abu Bakr Baki, not to rule until after his younger one, Abu Bakr Fari, ruled. So as a result, after uh, Macau was killed, now Abu Bakr Fari gathered the remnants of the Zeki Zeki people, about 3,000 of them, and then he led them in search of a new settlement. The Zeki Zeki people were the original Hausa people of Zaria. Just, just like uh, the, the, the Hausa people of Kano, you call them Kanawa, the Hausa people of Katsina, you call them Katsinawa, the Hausa people of Gobi, you call them Gobirawa. So the Hausa people of Zaria were called Zegi Zegi. Having gathered and inspiring the Zegi Zegi people and army, Abu Bakr Fari Jatau led them triumphantly to the present site of the city of Suleja, founded the town in 1828 and proclaimed himself the Emir of Abuja. It must be known that the present city of Suleja was actually named Abuja by Abu Bakr Farid Jatau, who coined the name from the first three letters of his name, Abu Bakr, and the first two letters of his surname, Jatau. This was the original name of Suleja, Abuja, Ja meaning fair in complexion, for Abu Bakr was a fair in complexion person. The city of Abuja was said to be a virgin land by the time the Zege Zege people arrived. It was not inhabited by any ethnic group. Nevertheless, the Bagi, the Koro, and other ethnic groups were all living at surrounding settlements such as Abuchi, Kurmi Sarki, Madala, and Diko. Until Abu Bakr Farid Jatau led his people into the present site, the place was dreadful and fearful for people to live in. For obvious reasons, the location of the present site was suitable for the Zegi Zegi people. First, it was a valley surrounded by hills and rocks. Therefore, the hills and rocks provided security for the new settlement against any external aggression. Second, the vegetation provides fertile soil for agricultural activities such as farming. What more? The area enjoys adequate rainfall, which also encourages immense farming activities. There are also rivers, which provide opportunities for economic activities such as fishing as well as irrigation farming. Before 1976, Abuja, presently Suleja, extended to as far as Abaji borders, to as far as Karmo borders, to as far as Jere in present Kaduna state, to as far as Paiko, just some 20 kilometers to Mina, the state capital of uh, Niger state. So it was a vast uh, emirate, you know, before the FCT was created. In 1828, when Abu Bakr Farid Jatau inaugurated his administration after the founding of the state, he operated a monarchical system of administration with the king at the head. He was both the political and religious leader. He was assisted by four principal officers, namely Madaki, who is the second in command in the administration of the kingdom and later emirate as from 1904 till date. Others are the Galadima, Wombai, and Dalhatu. Since the Emirate was an expansive one with so many villages and National Broadcasting Commission, its mandate as the sole regulator of Nigerian media. Dr. Thomas Dabba then and Ishak Mo 